Hey, what's going on guys? This is going to be a first episode in a new series I'm calling Killing Your Whips. And so what that is to do with this section of my bookshelf over here is uh, all stuff that's all actually work in progress. And one of those is the Gundam Marcosius. Now this kit, I did a live build of and then you guys never saw it again because I had this idea in my mind of doing the review and the work in progress and showing you guys my custom version all in one video. Uh, and I got to basically almost all of that except for right when I was kind of right in the finishing stages of getting it all the customization done and getting ready to start painting it is right when I moved into this current space. So during all the move and everything and I got started working on other things and everything, this just kind of fell by the wayside. And so now it's been months just sitting on the shelf. It's time to actually finish my Marcosius and show that to you guys. But what I want to do in this video is I'm just going to toss out my original idea of trying to show you guys everything all in one. So this is going to be the review of it and then first part of the work in progress, which will cover a lot of work in progress on it. Uh, and then I won't show you guys the finished product in this video, but with all the work in progress portion, this video is already going to be long enough. So I figured just whatever I already have, which was recorded months and months ago, I'll put this out in a video to you guys now. Uh, I'll finish up the painting on it and do a second work in progress video possibly or just show you guys the finished result once I've got it done if, depending on how much more I really end up doing with it. But for today guys, this is a resurrected video of my review and work in progress on the Marcosius. So hope you guys enjoy it. Hey, what is going on guys? Bandai resurrected the HD Iron Blood Orphans line out of the grave to bring us one more kit here, the Gundam Marcosius. Actually, I shouldn't say one more. I don't know if they're going to release more or not, but at least for the time being, it's just one more after a long break. But here, the Gundam Marcosius is a pretty interesting design. It wasn't actually one that I was interested too much in at first until I saw some builders getting it once it came out and then doing some modifications to it I saw on Twitter that looked pretty cool. So I wanted to try out some for myself. So strap yourselves in for the Gundam Marcosius. Going around here on inside the box is number 40 in the line. We're finally up over the hill in the Iron Blood Orphans line. There's a lot of these kits, aren't there? So here at the bottom you can see we've got this big giant sword, which actually is like a hidden sword inside of there. There's what the actual sword looks like, which I think this is just kind of like inside this bit, if I understand it correctly. And then he's got hidden arms with more swords in the wings, in the side skirts, so he's got plenty of swords to be swinging around, sort of like a Gundam General Grievous, if you will. And then over here, just to look at like how those parts open up, so how the wings open up, how the side skirts open up, and you got the secret swords that pop up out of there. So all right, he's got a lot of stuff going on on this kit. And then he's got these like kind of uh, little mini shields on the arm. They're at least mini shield, I guess I should say, just on the one arm. And then this kind of like claw weapon that kind of pops out from behind the hand as well. I'm not really too into that. It looks kind of, they're making it look fine in this picture, but in other pictures that I've seen of it, it looks kind of derpy. And I guess apparently these bits here on the side skirt are also rail guns, so that's pretty interesting. All right, here on the other side, just to look at what the kit looks like. And you, here you can finally actually really get a, a full sense of the kit. Because on, on the front, the box art is cool, but there's kind of like so much stuff going on, you can't really get a proper idea of what the actual Gundam looks like. And then in these action poses too, it's kind of like cropped off. But here we can finally get a look at what the kit is going to actually really look like. And so a couple of things. I just think there's just kind of a lot of stuff going on here with the gigantic shoulders and these gigantic wing backpack bits and the gigantic side skirts and these gigantic parts like strapped onto these gigantic feet down here. So the proportions will need a little bit of adjustments just by removing and kind of swapping stuff around basically on some different areas of the kits, but we'll get into all that momentarily. So the Gundam Marcosius, here's the line art or the artwork for that and then some other uh, lineup here from the HD Iron Blood Orphans line. So this kit was a little bit more expensive than your standard HD Iron Blood Orphans Gundam kit, but that's because, as you can see, there's a lot of stuff going on with this. It has a lot of parts and everything, so we'll take a look at all the runners here in a moment. Let's just get around to the manual here, if we can. So first off, in here we got a couple of adverts for the Blu-ray box and for gonna build Divers Re-Rise, but here is the manual. On the top we just have the box art once again, and down here, the artwork of the Gundam, yeah, and so it's in that particular style as we usually see in the manuals here. We've got some information there in Japanese and English if you want to check that out. And then on the back, more information about the short swords and the bastard mace. Oh my, I have to censor that, I don't want to get demonetized. The large long sword there, the shield and the knuckle guard claws, the rail guns, so this thing is pretty well armed up and so it should be a pretty formidable Gundam, I would say and the form and the Gundam frame, of course, it's going to have all that in there. And then we have the color guide down here at the bottom. I like that the main color for this is not quite white. It sort of looks like it's white, but it's not quite. It's white. It's 85% white and then 15% gray and then a tiny little drop of violet in there as well. And also pink, interestingly enough. So a pinkish violet tone of off-white, basically. So 
All right, here we have our parts list, and it looks like we're gonna be using everything in there except for a couple of polycaps and a couple of parts here off of the frame runner. And that's pretty much it. So you'll be using pretty much everything in this. Mostly pretty much a almost entirely new kit except for the frame runner, it uh, looks like. So then it just gets on into the construction here. Pretty standard HG Iron Blood Orphans kit, I would imagine. Going back around to our color pages here, we're gonna just gonna be finishing up the backpack and the weapons there. So you got the sword stored in the larger, thicker sword, and then just how to do all the gimmicks of folding out the swords, the short swords and doing all that gimmick stuff. So, all right, certainly has enough gimmicks and stuff going on, but let's just have a quick look through the runners here. All right, so here is the foil sticker sheet, and as you can see, it's pretty hefty for, a, for an HG, unfortunately. So we got some major stickers there, aside from just the little ones for the eyes and the head camera, you got a lot of big red ones and a couple little purple ones on there. So pretty sticker heavy kit, unfortunately. PC002 for our standard polycaps here in a dark brownish gray. And then a real long time no see here on runner A. This is the HG Iron Battle Orphans Gundam frame runner here. And it's once again in this dark brownish color as well. So you got all the little nice little detail parts, including hand parts and all that for the Gundam frame. Then runner B1 here, specifically for the Marcosius, of course, in that slightly purple, pinkish tinted off-white color, looking very nice. All the details, of course, looking good on here as well. We've got two of this B1 runner. Then we've also got runner B2 for some more of those parts, and also got runner B3 for a copy of this section of the B2 runner up there. And then runner C1 here in three colors. We've got a couple of yellow parts up there at the top for the V fin and the chest vents, some red parts across the bottom for the feet and a few other red accents, and then that dark brownish gray color there for some weapons parts and all that there throughout the center of the runner and then we do also have runner c2 for a copy of this section of the runner over here so it's looking pretty cool after taking a look at plenty of our hd arm blood orphans kits over the past couple years i don't really expect anything too out of the ordinary with this one but we'll get it snapped up we'll take a look at it and then we'll get to work but right, so here's how it's gonna look straight out the box, and I gotta say, I actually even kind of like this more than I was expecting to for how it looks just straight out the box. Now, like I said, I do plan on doing some modification to it, customizing this a little bit, changing some parts around, but even just straight out the box, it does still look pretty cool here. It's certainly got that Iron Blood Orphans flare going on with all the spiky bits pointing out everywhere, and the construction of it was pretty straightforward, although I gotta say, somehow it still felt slightly better than some of the previous Iron Blood Orphans Gundam kits. I gotta say, I don't know, there's probably not a whole lot actually different, it just felt slightly better for some reason, I don't know why, but there are a lot of stickers, it is a very sticker heavy kit if you do want to have it color accurate here, or as, as color accurate as you can make it straight out of the box just with the included stickers. Because even with those stickers, it's still missing some small color apps and things here and there, as you might expect with it being an HG kit, but it does still look pretty awesome as it is just straight out the box. For a quick size comparison, here it is with the Gushan Rebake, and it's a pretty big kit, as you can see. It's going to be a little bit taller than your standard uh, HD Iron Blood Orphans Gundam kit there, thanks to its big giant shoes that it's got on there. And not only is it taller, but of course it's going to be very wide as well with those massive wings and everything on it, so it's a very big, bulky kit for the line. Now just to give you guys an idea, I'll run through where all the stickers are placed here on the kit. So of course there for the head camera, you have a little sticker for that. For the eyes, it's actually two separate stickers they have to place on there for the eyes. On the V-Fin, you got those two stickers there on like the light purple color and then the two red stickers there, so four on the V-Fin. On the shoulders, you got these red bits that wrap around the edges and then this red stripe there on the inside of the shoulder there. On the cockpit hatch up in there in the chest, there's that red sticker there for that. These red stickers here for the corners of the front skirt armor there. And also a little sticker for the power sign there on the front of his crotch. Little red stickers here for the covers on the back of his hands. And then down here on these long side skirt parts here, you got this massive sticker that will fit over the end of that. Now it's really unfortunate that that's not a separate red piece because here on the wings in the backpack, this is a separate red piece. On this one, it's just a massive sticker and it's still a little bit of purple and red for this big sticker there. So it's a shame that they didn't make that separate red piece for that one. That's unfortunate. But as you can see, it's a pretty sticker heavy kit. Now, we do also have a couple here on the weapon as well. Well, one on the weapon, one here on the shield, I should say. And this is really simple. It's just one single piece that just plugs onto the arm. You can actually plug it either onto the left or the right, but it's meant to be plugged on here to this arm. Now, you'll notice on this arm also is prominent one of the few seam lines that this kit has and it is pretty good and it doesn't have a ton of seam lines but it does have one here on the front of the forearm there the back of the forearm is covered up by the claw weapon there which we'll see here in a moment and then on the legs as well the legs also don't really have much in the way of seams uh, except for here on the back 
of the leg there. You'll see that seam going down the back of the purple armor there on the back of the leg, unfortunately. And then here on the wings as well, you'll have a big seam line running down the main part of the purple part of the wings there like that. And then for his other weapon, the Bastard Mace, this can just be plugged on with this connection piece here onto the center of the back. Just plugs right into there for storage, which is pretty cool. It's kind of cool how that just attaches onto the center there, but then that can also be taken off. Let's pop that off, and then this can be handheld as a blunt weapon, but then of course you can take out the sword here. This is the large long sword, so that can just be used as well as a sword. So you can use it as like a blunt mace melee weapon or as a slicing sword. So pretty cool little option that you have with that and then of course we have these short swords four of them that are stored here in the wings two in the wings and then two in the side skirts so these just like this you can use these just as handheld weapons as well but of course these have the gimmick of being used like uh, in these parts which I'll show you here in a moment but just how these open up is pretty cool so that just opens up like that and then that pops out you can take that out of there for using the railgun gimmick here of the side skirts basically all you do is just take off this piece here and that's supposed to be the kind of barrel end of the railgun and then you just put this piece back on in the exact same place you just kind of like put it in a little bit more towards the back and don't push it in all the way so that is just basically exposing the barrel of the railgun a little bit there so that's supposed to meant to be like firing out of there I don't know it's, it's kind of silly it's not really much but it's something there I guess that you can do with that another gimmick and so for the purposes of this video I won't go into a detailed explanation of all of the articulation of the kit just know that it's very standard for your typical HD Arm Blood Orphans Gundam kits and the articulation overall is good and you'll see it demonstrated through just some different poses here showing off the different weapons and accessories and posing options that you can do just with a couple examples here before we get into taking it apart and modifying the kit any further. But aside from it sharing the articulation, it also shares basically the same pros and cons as all the other Gundams in the line in that they're pretty sticker heavy on the downside, but on the plus side, they do have a lot of nice detail in them. They're very nicely detailed. Um, this does definitely have some of the same weight issues though as well. Uh, just some parts get to be kind of weak, especially just because you have so much bulk on some of these parts and just you get some weak points like in the shoulders and the legs and especially the connection between the top and bottom half of the body where the torso plugs into the waist part is just a simple ball joint and if you have it up on a base like this it's going to be fine but just moving the kit around and, and stuff just posing the kit you do tend to have the top and bottom half of the kits falling apart just coming separated pretty easily just because they're just held together by a simple ball and socket polycap ball joint there in the center of two pretty massive heavy halves of the kit so overall i gotta say it's actually a pretty awesome kit i'm really glad that i decided to check this kit out i am still looking forward to making some modif modifications to it, but even if I wasn't, I gotta say, it is still a pretty awesome looking kit. There are certainly some aspects of the design that I like more than others, and some aspects that I don't really care for of the kit still, but if you were like me and feeling a bit hesitant about this kit, like, uh, you're kind of feeling a little bit tired of all the Arm Lord Orphans HD kits that you've built and maybe not too interested in getting another one, I gotta say, I mean, if you can find it for a good price, I would say give it a try, because it actually is a pretty cool design when you get into posing the kit and working with it. I, I was thinking that it's just kind of a little bit much, there's just too much stuff going on, but actually, I mean, it still does end up looking pretty cool. But now that we've seen what the kit looks like just straight out the box, it's time to get to work and make some modifications to it and see if we can't make it just a little bit more interesting, or at least for me personally. All right, let's get to work. Now, the first thing you guys need to know about uh, when it comes to doing any uh, custom modification and stuff to your kits is that you need to dispense with the thought that these kits are so fragile because the plastic in these kits is a lot more durable than you think and even if you do somehow along the way break something it's not the end of the world <laughs> stuff breaks sometimes and fixing broken parts is just kind of a part of something that you're going to have to deal with and it's something that you're honestly going to have to get good at because it's going to happen every now and then going into this there's a few things that i know right off the bat that i definitely want to do with this and there's a couple of things that i'm thinking about possibly doing and then there'll probably be a couple things that I've not yet thought of that I'll come up with along the way. But so let's just start off with the obvious ones, the ones that I definitely want to fix right off the bat. Here on the feet, this part here on the front has got to go. It's just too much on there. I don't really care for it. But if we remove that part and there's a polycap in there for holding that. There we go. We have a much more sort of normal looking foot there I think but now we have this big thing on the front of there that we'll have to do something about but I think that'll be pretty easy to stick an option part or just some plot plate over the top of that to cover that up not going to be a problem so we'll come back to that shortly because that's going to be just a pretty simple fix and these parts that we're not going to use will stick to the side because I may still want to end up using those parts for something else but I'm not sure yet so for the time being 
stick those over there. The next thing is these parts up here on the shoulders. I want to take those off the shoulders and move those down to be our new side skirt armor pieces. So I'm not really too big into these gigantic things he's got on the side skirts. So first need to just take this apart. Let's just take the shoulder armor off there. Also can remove the stickers as we go along as well because those are all going to need to be removed and everything. There we go. So that's out of there. Let's just see how this is going to look on the arm now that we don't have that on there. I'm going to need the hand back from over here. So just so you guys can see the difference now there between uh, without having this extra bit hanging down and with that on there, I think it's definitely much better. Now the other thing that I think I might want to do with, these, with this uh, shoulder armor is also trim down and have it uh, not sticking out quite so far. So I'm probably going to end up cutting the shoulder armor down a little bit more as well. So we'll come back to that in a moment. First of all, we need to figure out how we're going to make this side skirt armor to stay onto here. Now there's a couple of ways that we could do it, I think, but probably the easiest way is just going to be uh, turning all this stuff that we've got in here and just drilling a hole straight into there and then just turning this into a straight peg that, they could, that this can just plug straight onto there like that I think would be probably the easiest thing. So firstly we can cut off these little pegs here on the side and go ahead and just uh, clean that up a little bit here. And then we still have like this uh, shape from where the circle part was that we just cut off but I don't really want to keep that shape so I think I just want to make this into just a more squared off angle shape so for that I'm just going to file it down just with a flat file. We should just be able to take this off without too much trouble. There we go. That's much better. It looks very simple and that will just go onto there like that. So let's first put our hole in here. I'm going to whip out the always handy drill set. Let's see, I'm going to do uh, two millimeters here in the center first and then I'm probably going to want to step it up to three millimeters as well. Well, uh, that's not really working out like I was hoping it would, so uh, we're going to have to do something a little bit different, which is fine. What I think we're going to end up having to do is, well, there are a couple options, but I think actually this is probably what I should have done from the start. Uh, take the part from the side skirt that we already have and then make that to fit in here, and it should fit in there with just a little bit of trimming and just a little bit of work. It should fit in there just fine, and honestly, I mean, should have been what I should have done from the start, but you know, you should work with what you have. And so, all right, now learning experience, as always, it's always just kind of good to go along with that. So I know you can just go ahead and cut this off of here for now. And like I said, we'll have to do some more trimming uh, on that part to get it to fit inside of here. But first we need to hollow out this space in here. All right, so there we are. And uh, yeah, it's not pretty, but let's see. Then this part will hopefully fit into there, but it doesn't quite. And I think it's really only gonna take a little bit of filing for us to get there. So let's just, File this down a little bit on this side, get rid of that little kind of lip that it has there at the end. And then I think it should be fitting in here pretty snug. Now, yeah, it's kind of in there. I'll need to work on that just a little bit more to get it really fitting in just perfectly. But at least for now, we can sort of test that out, just see how that's going to look. And it uh, looks pretty good, I think. Yeah, all right. So I'm going to just uh, uh, finish that up and then I'll do the other side as well. And then we'll come back. The next thing I want to work on here is in the thigh. All right, so what I want to do with the thighs is basically extend them to make him ultimately a little bit taller because a lot of the Iron Blood Orphans Gundams have this where the thighs is very tiny, very short little section there. So what we're going to do to extend that uh, shouldn't be too difficult, I think. So let's just take this apart here so we can see what we're doing. Here is how it works. Basically, you have two sections inside the armor there. One is the top bar here, which is the hip connector, which needs to plug down into what is basically the knee joint there. And the armor pieces fit around that here. And as you can see, basically there's two slots in there. The top slot is for holding the top part of the that uh, joint, the part that plugs into the hips. And the bottom part is for holding the knee joint there so that they're, these two pieces are, are held together, but they're also held together by these parts of armor here which will fit around there and then kind of lock these two pieces together but we don't necessarily really need that lock between them so actually what i'm going to do is instead of plugging that armor onto here i'm actually going to plug it on uh, above there 
and also going to add a plate. So I'm going to add a, a plate of plop plate uh, to the top of this. So it's actually going to be sitting up a little bit on top of that. And what I can do with these pieces of armor, uh, basically, uh, I can just glue these together. So that's just one piece. And ultimately what is going to happen is I'm going to have to cut a little bit on the inside of here as well because as it is once these are glued together I want to be able to just slide this down over the top of here but it doesn't fit because of that little uh, notch detail on the inside of there so I'll have to cut that away so that um, then when we add one uh, piece of plot plate to the top of here just one millimeter uh, stack of plot plate onto the top of here then we'll have to drill a hole through that for this peg to fit down through. Uh, and then so that'll give us an extra uh, extra extra millimeter sorry and then just the fact that this is plugged onto uh, the bottom of their uh, the bottom of this connection instead of the top of this connection that's also going to give us another millimeter so that's like two millimeters there and then that will just be able to slide over the top of this and then this will just plug down through there into there now the problem is that this peg is going to not be long enough then at this point so what we're gonna have to do is make a new peg here I'm just gonna cut this off and replace that with a new peg that will just be long enough to fit so shouldn't be too difficult let's get into it so i've got a piece of one millimeter thick plot plate here i'm just going to cut this to stick onto this part here first and it doesn't need to be super exact in this case because it's going to be on the inside of the parts anyway so we don't need to worry about making it so super precise give this a little sanding so we have some good glue adhesion there and there's that now we need to give that some time to cure and then we can trim that up a little bit just so that it's uh fitting very flushly but so or I mean like trim it up around the edges so that it's a uh, you know the same shape anyway so there's that as for this peg as well I'll just go ahead and snip that off now I need to actually also determine what size that is because I'm not sure offhand it looks like probably two centimeters two millimeters uh, but I can't be sure now easy way to test this which I should have done before sticking that piece of plot plate on there would be to just uh, stick a drill bit in the hole and see which size fits. So I'll have to take apart the other leg here quickly to try that out. So we'll see. Uh, yeah, two millimeter fits in there, but it's a little bit loose. So let's see. Uh, three millimeter also fits in there, but it's also a little bit tight. So let's just do two millimeter first and then we'll see how it goes. So where we cut off that peg, I just want to make sure we have a nice clean surface here. I'm just going to mark the center and then we're just going to drill a hole for our new peg to go into here and we'll glue that up into here and then that should be all good. Another quick and easy way to do this would be to just take a caliper if you have one and stick that on there and to find exactly the size of this. So that looks like it's showing three millimeters. So let's go over to our stack of used up runners. And I'm just going to want a piece of this and it looks to be about the same size. Might have to do a little bit of sanding on that just to get it a little bit narrowed down. But we'll just go ahead and go with this for now. And voila, there we go. There we have a new peg for that. So I uh, just need to stick some glue on that. I need to give it a little bit of space there or near the polycap because it's right near there. And I need to make sure the polycap can still move a little bit. It doesn't really need to ultimately move that much anymore because it's not really going to move much. But... Just a little glue on that and as this one as well. Obviously it's way too long at this point. We'll cut it down later, that's easy enough. But for now, that is good to go so we can give that some time to cure. Now uh, for these parts, like I said, I'm just gonna just go ahead and glue these together but I need to get rid of that little bit of detail in there. Make sure it's gonna be fitting over where it needs to fit. So for that, I'm just gonna go ahead and just file that and sand it down so that's nice and smooth inside there. Everything should fit nice and easily. Now also, should say on this part on the front of the leg there's this extra little bit here that I also need to cut out so a little bit of cutting required just to get this all cleaned up and then I'll just go ahead and just give these guys a good sanding so that's I think it's easier to sand the parts while they're separated uh, just in preparation for painting and then go ahead and glue them together and then we'll see how it's looking all right so while that uh, glue is curing over there there's a couple other things we can work on just for the time being first of all here on the foot let's cover the issue of this little hole there what to do for the front of the foot there for the piece that we removed now, I had the idea uh, wouldn't it be cool to do all the changes and modifications that we're gonna do to this kit without using any external parts at all now I am using a little bit of plot plates so that's so uh, that's one thing but I mean like no other option parts or option uh, like parts from other kits any kit bashing or anything like that. I'm just only going to use what is included with this kit and a little bit of plot plate. So I thought, oh, that, that's a, yeah, let's let's go with that if we can. And so 
what we can use for that is uh, here from the side skirts this little part here I'm actually not going to use and we'll get to what I'm going to do with the wing and side skirt parts in a minute because I do have a plan for those but uh, this little gray part I'm not going to use so I think I can cut this down I basically just cut off the bottom part of here and then cut off this front part of here and then just stick that right over the top of there and it should fit pretty well so let's give it a try and it looks like it's gonna fit on there just about perfectly so all right good enough for me it works i'm gonna stick some glue on that and stick it on there Okay, uh, then as for the shoulders here, I am going to cut down these bits sticking off the shoulders there. It's, it's a little bit too much. And so fortunately, I've got kind of a guideline for that already. You can see there's this panel line here and then this one down below there. So what I'm going to do is basically just make this cut so that it's cut along these already existing lines there. So that should be simple enough. As for what I'm going to do for this space in here, probably I'm not sure yet. So I don't know. We'll have to come back to that. But well, let's just get these parts cut off first and then we'll see. All right. So here's a long side compared to another shorter side. And I actually ended up bringing it in just a little bit uh, further so that it's just flat on that side. And as you can see on the inside of here, there's this kind of detail and just the inside of that shoulder not really looking all that great so I think what I'm gonna do is get rid of this section here where there's a, a, a peg between the two halves plugging in together here that's what this bit is but it's not actually really necessary because there's another peg here and another one at uh, like in here as well so we don't really need this big third one there so I'm gonna take this apart and cut that section out of there and, and then I think what we can also do is take this part here remember from the side skirt we we cut off the circle part to in order to use for the side skirts here. This inside part of the side skirt, this uh, that was connected to this. But uh, this part, uh, when you cut off this section here, ends up just looking like this little detail and part there anyway. So I think that will actually, once we get rid of this bit there, which is just the connection peg between the two halves, then we can actually maybe stick this part up in there just to look like something so it's not just a big hollow section but just to look like sort of something up in there I think will probably maybe work so let's give it a try. Alright so that's good and hollowed out inside there and then for well, I was deciding what to do and thinking about it and thinking about some different options and things and I think I am going to go ahead and use this little piece up inside there uh, but I had to file down the back of this so as you can see like uh, when it's cut down it should be like that and I just basically had to file it down a little bit so that it won't interfere with this piece here this piece right there so I can go ahead now and just glue this into there and that should just help just to fill the gap so it just doesn't look like this big empty space up inside there there we go like that I think that should work pretty well just to have something in there at least and let's see where is our arm here it is so let's have a look see how that's gonna look on the body like that I think looks pretty good all right I'm happy with that so I'll go ahead and do all that here to the other side but uh, I don't need to do that on camera first let's just take a look at the V fin then also shall we come off there well actually first let's just say on the here I'm actually not entirely sure with this one as well like with the shoulders I want to cut it basically along uh, along where like the pre-existing line is now we do have a couple of different panel lines here on the beef and now I'm thinking I want to cut it all the way down to this shorter panel line along here maybe but just in case I'm just going to cut it down to this first panel line here first and see how I like that uh, for the overall width it still be pretty wide but not quite as wide as it is now and then for the upper V fins here there's also a panel line there where I want to cut these down a little bit also so cut those down to basically where where the red sticker was covering just cut all that part off so that this uh, these center V fins will be just much shorter little bits on there so let's uh, try that and see how it looks after some very careful uh, trimming and my actual uh, two millimeter BMC chisel here was actually quite useful also so that uh, helped just to cut out those uh, smaller v-fins there in the center and i think i'm pretty happy with this i don't think i want to cut the uh larger the main part of the v-fin shorter i think i'm pretty happy with how that is like that so the top part is a little bit smaller 
the overall width is a little bit narrower and I think that's looking at I think pretty good so we'll just go with that for now. Now I do want to also shorten these bits on the face. The armor parts that come down from the side of the head uh, down here to the front of the face there are a little bit long. I want to just shorten those up a little bit so very simply just going to file those down a little bit but I'm going to take the face out first so I just in case don't accidentally file anything on the chin or anything like that as well. But basically just to be clear what I mean is, is these parts extending out here I just want to file them back so his uh, sort of side beard isn't quite so long. Uh, Alright, I think that is gonna work for us. How's that looking? It's uh, just that chin is just a little bit more, uh, it doesn't have quite that length to it. I think it just looks a little bit better like that. A little bit more normalized, not quite so exaggerated, elongated part there. So. Yeah, I think that's looking pretty good. Uh, uh, as a just kind of quick side note here for the front skirts, I don't really plan on doing any, anything special with these except for just they have a safe, little safety flag on there. I need to cut and trim that down. Uh, so I'll just do that real quick. But we need to talk here about the arms then. On the front, we have a seam line here we need to handle. Also on the back on the elbow, there's a little bit more of a seam line there, which I actually might cut out this section. I'm not entirely sure yet, but I want to do something with the whole claw thing here on the back of the arm just because I'm not really into it. So I've got a couple of ideas and the problem is I, I wish you could just like take this off and just have the arm like that but just the, the arm, this whole back of the arm doesn't really look good. It's, it definitely needs to have this part on there to cover that up because without that it just, is, just doesn't look right there. So we need to do something with this. The question is what exactly? But uh, after some careful deliberation I think I know what I want to do with this. So. Well, uh, first, uh, to deal with this seam line on the front, that's going to be easy enough. And what I'm going to do with this bit here on the back is actually this whole section here, this little segment, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and cut that out, so I'm not going to have that on there at all. And the problem with removing this seam line here on the front is that you don't want to just uh, close these pieces together because they're holding in the, the elbow joint here, so then you would have to do like some creative masking and stuff to, to paint the elbow joint a different color. I wanted to uh, modify this in a way so that the elbow joint can be separated for painting and then it can be put back into the arm here uh, with this part removed. So if we take this part here we can see that uh, this whole section which is these uh, which what will show of this section is the elbow joint of course and then uh, these hoses here which will show like through the forearm but these hoses on the back arm actually won't show because they'll be covered up by this so we can go ahead and just cut that whole section away and then we'll just cut off the pegs of here. Uh, these are what will actually like uh, connect into these holes on the inside of the arms there, but we don't really necessarily need that connection if we're just going to glue it later. So what we can do is uh, I can cut those pegs and cut off this back part so then we'll also have to glue this polycap in place there for the wrist connection. But then once these two pieces are uh, glued together like this, fixed to like that, and we can remove this seam line there. Uh, then we want this uh, elbow joint part to be able to just slip right into there and it should once we just cut off those pegs and then just cut out everything that's just kind of in the way of that happening. So it uh, shouldn't really be all that difficult I think. Alright, so after actually having to cut out a little bit of this section on the inside there as well, uh, that'll be fine, again, not going to hurt anything, then that just slots right into there just like that, which is fine, and then, you know, later when it comes to the final assembly, I can just put a little drop of glue on that and it'll be fine, but actually it's kind of holding in place now as it is, it's a little bit kind of loose, but we'll just put a little bit of glue on that in the end and that'll just make sure that that's glued into place there and we won't have any issues. That means we can go ahead and move forward with removing the seam line here on the forearm there. Just don't forget to put that polycap in there before we do, but then as for the back of the arm, you can just kind of get an idea there. For the moment, it needs to be cleaned up, I think, a little bit more there, what the back of the arm is going to look like, but actually that's also going to be cleaned up uh, or just like hidden a little bit more actually by what I want to do here. Uh, what I'm thinking of, and we'll see how it goes, basically, I'll, I'll get to work on this and we'll see how it's looking if I want to go one way or the other, but uh, what I surely want to do is cut off these claw bits there at the end of the gray piece, uh, and then from there, I uh, either want to just kind of like 
to just square this off and then just make this look like sort of just like a big block just attached onto the back of his arm and so that it maybe looks like it's supposed to be some sort of like external battery or something like that plugged onto there which I think is kind of a cool idea. Or, uh, which is could also be cool, is we have these swords now, which I'm not going to use in the other parts, which, again, we'll get back to those. Uh, and so what I'm thinking of what we could do is just store two in the back of each arm, and I need to basically cut out the center of this so that we have space to plug these in, and then these will plug into the back of the forearm and just be stored there, up inside there, something like that, but obviously further into those parts. So I'm thinking that could be cool as well. I'm just not exactly sure the best way of how I want to actually go about doing that. Basically just like cut this whole part in half and then just like uh, cut out the in-between part and then basically just glue this all back together just kind of all as one piece and so then like these two will be uh, just permanently glued together like that and then these pieces will be glued to the side of there and that will all just plug onto the back of the arm as it is or if I just want to actually try to just cut out a canal while keeping this all as one piece without cutting it in half just cut out a canal down the center for these to plug into I think ultimately it's gonna be the same it's gonna look the same in the end uh, so I'm just trying to think which one will ultimately really be easier and also the most stable without kind of messing the thing up so let me think about that Alright, so real quick, actually, before we get uh, continue on with the arm there, I just want to show this to you guys now that i got the leg assembled. This will be the longer leg over here, and you guys should be able to sort of see the difference in height with something I can stand this on so you can see. But anyway, hopefully there you guys can sort of get an idea of the uh, longer leg there. And actually, I apologize, I meant to show this to you guys earlier. Actually, this is uh, OatV on Twitter. I'll put a link to his Twitter down below, but uh, actually the idea for a couple of the modifications that I'm making to this came from his Barbatos build that I saw. So he posted his here that he's working on, and the idea of moving like the shoulder part down to the side skirt I got from him, and then also trimming down the V-fin. Now you can see he trimmed down the V-fin all the way, I'm not going to trim it down all that much. Uh, but this part here on the foot, I actually hadn't, when I looked at this before, I hadn't really noticed that, so it's really just kind of funny that I actually did the exact same thing on mine, it wasn't actually like intentional that I meant to copy off of basically the same idea that he had for his but it just kind of worked out that we both had the same idea or just I had maybe taken a mental note of that and maybe not really thought of it actively but either way, I didn't remember that aspect of his build but it's just kind of happenstance that I ended up doing the same thing with mine but I'm gonna go ahead and modify the other leg here too and yeah just we'll continue on working on the arm then like I said the first thing I know I want to do is get rid of these claws so we'll just go ahead and cut these off now and then just get ahead of ourselves there. And I think probably what I'll end up doing is cutting, is just shaping it along this line that's already existing there. But in order to put the two mini swords, small swords in between there, I have decided I'm just gonna just cut this whole thing in half and we'll just kind of play a beer. Not exactly sure how this is gonna work out, but we'll make it work. So just gonna kind of, I'm not gonna be too scientific about this cut because I just need to get this in half and then we'll work on it from there. I just need the two halves of this separated so yeah so this front end I'm just gonna uh, shape this up along that existing line there and then on here where we made the cut I'll have to just shave this down all along the inside and there's a kind of a line here that I'm gonna make as like kind of the guide for that as well and what I'm gonna do with the short swords and this is just kind of fix I'm just gonna fix them in there permanently and just make this a permanent thing that's gonna be stuck onto the back of the arm so it's not gonna be something that they're actually gonna be able to be able to take out so what I need to do with these is then just kind of uh, just some sanding and everything on these because once they're all fixed together it'll be hard to kind of sand them and I'll just paint this all as one thing and then have to do some masking and kind of paint them as a different color or whatever however I'm going to do that but so I'm just going to make this all as one solid bit to be able to plug onto the back of the arm and then we'll have to just be a little bit more creative with our painting but it just seems the easiest way to do this modification. Okay, so the swords are shaped up, and I also filed the edge of the sword to make them a little bit more sharp looking, just to then make it look better. And then here's the two sides of what's going to be our holder here. So uh, I want to also use this little piece. This is a piece from the side skirt part that was like used to hold on to the sword like that uh, in the side skirts. Anyway, I'm going to just cut this off so that I can just use like the side bit of that to place in between the two swords, because otherwise when they're stuck in there side by side, I don't want them to be... Uh, flat against each other because the sword blades are okay. There's a gap, but then the handles, there's uh, they're right next to each other. I want them to be a, I want there to be a small gap between them. So I'm going to use uh, this piece 
to create just a small gap between the two swords. So what I'm basically going to do is just cut this in half and use both halves of this in between here. Kind of hard to explain, you'll see what I mean in a minute, but basically I'm just using the little pieces of this in place of just using little squares of plot plate basically is kind of the only thing. So I'm just going to glue these two to the side of here and then they will be glued together. So let's just get that on here first. So you can see those are glued onto the side of one sword like that and then we'll put the other sword on the other side and that'll those two little pieces will create a little gap between the two of them. There we go, like that. So I'm going to give that a little bit of time to cure and then we'll stick the sides the parts on the side and then get this back onto the arm. Alright, so I think these have had ample enough time for now to dry it. Now on the side bits I left to kind of uh, what you can see there, it's like a little lip on the end, so when these fit into place that will kind of hold the back side of that like that. And these are just going to be, like I said, just glued onto there essentially, so <clears throat> nothing to it. But to do it, let's just glue them on. And make sure everything is lined up. Looks pretty good. And then again, we just need to give that some time to dry. So before we get this then strapped onto the back of the arm, we need to remove the seam line on this arm part. So we've got this seam on the front that we need to take care of, and on the back of the arm, we've got this bump part where the original back part of the arm was plugged onto there. But now that we've totally reshaped that, I've gone ahead and just cut that off of here because we're just going to be sticking this onto the back of the arm there like that. So uh, let's go ahead and remove the seam. Don't forget to put the pulley cap in there before we do. I'm sure I could probably put it in again later, but it's okay. I'll just don't forget to put it in straight off the bat. Okay, so while that stuff's curing in, I think that's going to be something you'll notice me saying a lot. It's basically, modify something, glue it, wait while that's drying, while that glue is drying, go and work on something else. So it's a lot of like bouncing around between these parts, I understand, but that's kind of the way it goes. Uh, we need to talk about here this other seam line on the back of the leg, which is actually going to be a very easy one to get rid of. So I'll just show you guys how we're going to do that. Basically, uh, we need to take these parts off of here first. And basically how these parts fit onto here is that they plug onto these little pegs here on the side and then also kind of around this bit there in the center. Maybe this one's an easier one to show you. You can see around there, around that bit there at the center at the back of the leg. So basically we can get rid of these pegs on the side so that once these are joined together like that, this will just fit straight onto the back of the leg there. And we'll just plug into that center peg there. So not only do we need to get rid of these little pegs here on the side, which is easy enough to just clip those off, but also the other thing that's going to be blocking our way is this little bit here. You can see next to these uh, piping bits on the back of the leg. There's a little bit of a lip on the side where it kind of sticks out. Basically, we need to cut that down so that's also out of the way. This is this area doesn't show on the finished kit, so it doesn't really matter about clipping this out as well. So there you go. You can see it looks like we should have a smooth path to just plug this right on here, I think. Let's give it a try. And it's a little bit tight around here because these parts are kind of crashing into each other. So I guess these, you can see, these parts at the front do kind of close in a little bit, so they might have a little trouble getting over the edge of that. We'll maybe sand that down a little bit, but ultimately that will just plug onto the back of the leg like that. There you go. And it's a little bit loose, but again, this one, we can just put a little drop of glue on that later. Once everything's all painted and everything, just put a little glue down there. And then when we plug this onto there, it will be nice and tight. So yeah, you can see we're having a little bit of trouble if I can demonstrate this. There we go. Once that is on there, so this whole area, let me just kind of roughly outline this for us for our illustration purposes. This whole area of the kit here is not going to show, is going to be covered up by, by uh, the side part there. So we can actually trim this down a little bit so that we're not getting these parts kind of crashing into each other here when we're trying to slide this back onto there. So right there you can see, uh, not that pretty. But it's okay because it is all going to just be covered up here. So let's just put this back on so you can see. It'll still look exactly the same. And we just covered up that bit and it'll still fit on there. So I'm just going to lay some glue on that seam line. Then we can wait for that to dry as well and sand that. And we should be good to go on that. All right. So all the seams are moved and it's standing. 
it's coming together. There's just a couple more things we still have yet to do. Uh, one thing I want to do here in the neck is bring the head down just a little bit so that it's a little bit farther down into the torso there. And basically, if you can see one easy way that we can do that in here, it's where that polycap ball joint will fit into here. Basically, we're just going to lower that down a little bit. So we just need to cut away this section, just the top part of that, just to bring that down a little bit. And then the whole polycap will sit down a little bit further down into there. So we just need to kind of take apart the chest here a little bit first. And now that we've got it apart here, I'm starting to think actually maybe I'm going to do it maybe a little bit differently because if you look at this here, tricky to get that out of there. Uh, if you take a look at this, you can see if I bring down this, this level a little bit, then these this whole part on the side is all connected at the very top of that, which is going to basically remove this connection, which means this whole thing will come apart from this center part, which is going to be a problem. Then I'll have to do something to uh, attach this onto the torso or something. And so basically, I think the easier way, instead of cutting this, would be to just cut the polycap. So I think I'm basically just going to like cut this polycap in half here and then just super glue that back onto this part to permanently fix it. So that'll bring it down like a two, two millimeters or so. So you can see, instead of it being there, I'll just cut it like about right here and then just glue that down to the bottom of there. I think that will also work. Worst comes to worst, I definitely have extras of this polycap laying around uh, in my polycap leftovers box. So I have a replacement if I, this ends up not working how I plan, but So once again, we'll give that some time to dry and let's move on to the backpack. So here's what I want to do. This uh, center part is going to be the same, but for this part here that's connecting that, we're going to cut this off so that it's going to be just a straight connection or it's just going to be just a flat surface there, if that makes sense. We're going to cut off this bit here because it's not going to attach on here exactly the same way. Now this part, the part from the backpack and the side skirt, I'm going to attach to make one big thing. So it's sort of like a binder, sort of something like what's on the back of like the Hyakushiki or the Delta Plus, something like that, some sort of binder like that. So basically need to cut away some of this section so that it fits onto the top of here so that we're keeping this vent there in the center and then also going to be cutting off the top of this because I don't want this kind of rounded connection bit there at the top uh, and so it's going to basically just look like it's some sort of like beam cannon or something there at the end of that and that is going to be just our backpack section like that some sort of like a binder yes so like I said uh, first thing we can do is cut off this section and then here at the top and I suppose we pro should probably uh, take off this sticker too, I guess. And then once that is cleaned up, you can see, so there you go. There's how that's gonna look then at the top, which is looking good. Then like I said, just to uh, fit these together, I basically need to figure out what I need to cut from here and what I need to cut from here in order so that they'll fit together where I want. Now, uh, it's just a matter of kind of figuring out what I want and what I don't want. Now, I don't need this hole here, so I know I want to get rid of that from this section and also, don't really, if I can, you know, cut it in a way that I can avoid this square section here. I mean, I could obviously fill that in, putty that, whatever. It's not really that big of a deal if I can't, but don't really need that section of that. So basically somewhere around here. And so if I mark it, so like this vent's going to be poking out like around there. Well, we can remove that and then I suppose just plug it into there where we need it to. So pretty much just need to cut away this section of this and think like a portion of this. So anyway, let's just try it. Okay, so after a lot of cutting and shaving, here is what this portion is gonna look like. You can see I basically uh, just cut out a little bit here and the connection for the vent there and the top part. I had to cut off this little fin there on the side and then down here at the bottom. These are a little bit kind of loose at the moment. I'll have to glue them in place here in a bit. But then I uh, had to cut this down there at the bottom here. That little bit, I had to cut that off. And then also cut out a little notch in here in the top of that. And that is where our newly reshaped vent is going to fit onto there like that. And so basically what I did is just also hollow out this section here in the center of that. And so this is going to be able to slide down into there. I'm just going to glue this in place. This is just going to be one big solid piece uh, soon once I get everything just uh, finished cleaning up. And then you can see this vent 
it's going to fit right onto there like that in the space between them and then I'm thinking about using this part here which is the part where you took off the foot and cutting out this little part and sticking it down into fill kind of this little hole there sort of maybe like that just sticking that right in there maybe I don't know maybe maybe not or I might just not really worry about that now as for the center of the backpack these parts which are going to connect onto the binders they sandwich between these but I want to get rid of the little bit of seam line that we have here on the backpack so I wanted to be able to put these parts together without locking this connection piece into place just to make it easier to paint otherwise I'll have to mask it so uh, fortunately Bandai made it kind of easy for me to do that if you take a look here they've kind of already given me uh, an exact place of where to cut for this so I'm just gonna cut out that little square that's marked off as just sort of like a little detail there and then on this part it's got that kind of lip around the edge I just need to cut off the sides of that just so that it's a straight peg and that will fit straight into this hole here and that of course won't be super tight in there but then once you turn it it'll actually kind of lock it into place so let me just kind of show you here you'd also need to file down the top and bottom of that just to make it a little bit shorter but as you can see then uh, once this is of course glued and everything this will slide into place and yeah it'll be loose then it can easily come out but then once it's turned it's locked in because of these sections that are still left there on the top and bottom so that'll work just fine I'm gonna glue it anyway so it doesn't really matter if I mean it can still move back and forth like that and it will be sort of loose if you have it just right the right way but I'm gonna glue it in place there anyway so it's not really gonna matter but there we go that fits and then I don't need to worry about having any problems removing the seam line on this no, another quick thing here, going back to the neck, I forgot, or I don't know, for whatever reason, I forgot that uh, uh, super glue doesn't really stick to a polycap material very well, so that didn't work. The neck came apart there. So luckily, we've got something that is also going to work very well. So this piece, which is taken out of the wings, which we're not going to actually use, uh, it is actually the same exact perfect ball joint size to fit on the head as well. So basically, instead of using a polycap, we can just use this peg, which is just this part of the kit that we're not really going to need anyway. So we can just go ahead and cut off the little fork and at the end of that, and in the top of our torso here, just drill straight down into that. head on the new neck piece and just slot that down into the body and it's going to be a little bit long so I can cut it to the right length or drill deeper it doesn't really matter either way but let's see there we go and actually I like this idea a lot better than uh, cutting the polycap anyway because that was sort of a little bit iffy in the first place this way seems very good so I'm actually pleased that it worked out the way that it did there we go, looking good, I think. All right, so basically, uh, pretty much everything is done. I need to uh, do a little bit more cleanup and gluing work and stuff on the backpack just to get that all squared away, everything fitting nice and tightly and all looking good. Uh, a little bit of sanding. And by the way, here's what the arms look like as well. Let me just show this to you. I got this one attached on here. There we are. Also pretty pleased with that. So this one as well, I'm not sure if I'm gonna actually need to mask that and it's just glued on here permanently. So if I'll wanna paint like this part a different color or just paint this all a different color and then just paint the swords a different color, or paint this all the same color and the, just the swords themselves a different color. But either way, pretty happy with how that looks. I'm um, still not really decided too much about anything on the painting. I haven't even thought about the colors or anything yet. So uh, we'll get to that pretty soon enough. So I'm just going to finish up some of the work here. Just getting the backpack all looking nice and spiffy. Also the shield has been sitting over there. I think I am still going to use the shield here on the arm. Just because I do like it. It's a pretty cool looking shield. But yeah, as far as the modifications are, that pretty much should just about do it. So we can, uh, I'll finish up getting everything looking good, sanded down, and ready for painting, and then we'll head over and we'll start talking about some painting.